It's not often a manufacturer releases an all new V8 engine, and this is our supercharged 7.3 Godzilla by Ford. Before we get into the tech on the supercharger performance, let's take a look at what this new 7.3 engine is all about. We're with Frank from Dandy Engines. And mate, it's awesome Ford have got this brand new V8, cam in block, but it's designed for the, the F trucks in the US. So the Super Duties, quarter ton, full ton trucks. Yes, they've got the power stroke, but the gas engine is having somewhat of a resurgence. And I know GM's got a, a big truck V8 coming as well, but You've had a chance to play with it. What are your thoughts on this as an NA motor? They've put everything we've ever wanted as an old school guy would ever want into a new platform and they've just, they've nailed it, you know, all the way down from the crankshaft being a real like big, strong, heavy duty steel crank to the six bolt yeah. main caps, a big, thick cast iron block, mm. perfect truck motor, awesome performance motor. So it's a 445 cubic inch motor. It's got a, a large like 4.220,000 bore. Most LS dart blocks would be like 4.125. So it's nearly 100,000 bigger yep. just in bore size. And cylinder heads, we haven't pulled them off, but... we Look, we, we've we seen what we've measured from just pulling the manifold off and they're just a, a really nice port to begin with. We've been on the engine dyno for a couple of days. Um, there's plenty of testing. We've used fuel tech. So talk about the power of fuel tech with controlling the engine in this sort of testing and development phase? Look, to keep the whole project to a, a, a restricted budget and not spend five days on the dyno, we felt like the fuel tech was easy to plug in once we worked out some basic stuff, cam sync and, and what, what they use for a, um, a trigger wheel. Yeah, we fired it up and ran it and we were making hits, I think, within the hour of, of running it. So out of the crate, we've added dyno pipes. There's an ATI balancer. We've got a GT350 throttle body. So what did we see when we first ran it up with a stock intake manifold? With 98 Ron pump fuel, we started off on the first pull and it made like uh, 480 horsepower straight away. <laughs> Just trimming fuel and playing with timing. This engine has a variable cam gear. We were able to play around with the camshaft position and found another 30 odd, 40 odd horsepower by the yep. time in conjunction with fuel and timing, finishing it off at like around 550 horsepower. That's pretty good. Pretty stout. It was so yep. consistent. Every pull, every change that we made. So when the engine was released, we were quick to get one to develop the supercharger. This is a pre-production unit. So it's inverted. It's using our TVS 2650 air pump. It's got a really big brick inside this billet top lid. Large inlets and outlets on the intercooler to get plenty of uh, coolant flow. And we can run a bigger throttle body as well, which I know for max effort combinations further down, the development path will definitely need. So you fitted it here at the dyno. Yeah, it was amazing how quick and easy. Um, once we took the fuel rails off, we buzzed about 10 bolts off. I think I spent more time connecting water to it than I actually did bolt doing the labor of you know, removing the old one, putting the new one on. For the initial testing, we're just running the factory 6PK pulley system. What did you find once you started doing some pulls? Getting it going was easy. We had the map from the other stuff. So we just introduced a bit of extra fuel with the bigger injectors and the bigger fuel pump. Once we started making the first couple of runs with low timing, it was mind blowing how much torque it makes. For anyone that drag races knows that if you've got a good torque curve, it's easier for the converter to do its job easier for the car to go fast. Being a street car, it's everyone's dream to have that much torque down low. It's definitely what people love about our superchargers. It's that mid-range torque and, and, and boost that you're getting. Look, you know, around eight pound of boost, it took nothing to get up to like, we went from 500 foot pound to 700, seven, you know, we started seeing 750 foot pound and the horsepower went with it. You know, we started, we started up like a 640 horsepower with a, a really rich, no timing tune-up. I 
on the low boost range, it will start to see 770s, 780s, yep. all the way up to 800 horsepower. And it's still a truck engine, so we're not turning it oh, no, aggressively. The, the camshaft's baby for anyone mm. that doesn't understand that, you know, you've just put a supercharger, a bolt-on power adder. And what are we revving it to? We're only turning. Oh, it's only like 6,000. I think um, yeah. the most, I think it made peak power around 58 to 6,000. And then we've added a, a smaller pulley. We want to see what happens with some more boost. And that, that took the boost to 11, 12 PSI. And yeah. then, then we made, I think we saw a peak number of just over 800, which yeah. is amazing for an unopened engine. Oh, I was, I couldn't believe we did what some, let's say 30 runs and we never pulled a valve cover off once. I mean, I was so curious. I had to pull one off at the end just to have a look inside. But yeah, it's, it's crazy to do that many runs on a dyno and not yep. touch a valve cover. So as a crate engine with a power adder, what sort of customer do you see? Well, I, I just think of the, the customers that ring me up and say, hey, I've got a, uh, an X wire or an X, you know, like any Ford, old school Ford, and they want to do something at a, a $30,000 budget, this fits in perfect. You're going to have an engine that idles at 600 RPM or 650 RPM. It can go all day with a supercharger making 800 horsepower on, on pump fuel. We haven't even touched base on race fuel mm. and other things to um, excite it even more. A standard camshaft, you should be able to drive this from Melbourne to Brisbane. And, and, and get great fuel economy. And get great fuel economy, you know. Perfect for drag challenge. To me, this is, like, I'd be excited to put this in a car for drag challenge. It could drive all week and go fast at the racetrack and yep. still have all the right manners so your wife can drive it or your girlfriend can drive it, you know. And it's not an overly complicated install. Like, yes, this sits reasonably high because it's from a truck, but everyone likes running well, you cows got, and... Well, you've got to remember, the engine is an inch, roughly about an inch narrow than a Cleveland engine and it's an inch wider than a 351, so they say. To me, it's almost a perfect fit, and we haven't put one in a Ford yet, but I'm, I'm hoping if it can fit with a no bonnet scoop, mm. I think you almost must be crazy not to have one. So with that level of performance, what do you see with your customers at the, at the track, time-wise? I've had an 800 horsepower engine in the Danny Engine XW, and we had 200 foot-pounds less. It ran nine sixes. 140 mile an hour roughly, and it was about 3,500 pounds. So this has got 200 pounds more, uh, foot pounds more, so I think the converter should work even better if it's, if it's an automatic car. It wouldn't surprise me if it ran 950. So pretty impressive numbers for phase one. We're excited for phase two. Hit like and subscribe to the channel, and we'll be back very soon with the next step in the power and performance of the 7.3 Godzilla.